Hey everyone, Kunik here, back with another Short Stories Wednesday for you all today. I've got a few stories lined up for you, one of which is a little disturbing, uh, to say the least. So with that all said, let's roll for initiative and begin the stories. Story number one, how to DM ruin having a familiar by doing the unspeakable to one. This was about a year or two ago. I was playing a homebrew start of a campaign with two friends, an animal lover and a good friend of mine. My friend, who we'll call D, was DMing. The setup was that we were students at an adventuring school. The group consisted of me, a wizard, a halfling rogue, a resident animal lover, and I can't remember my other friend's class. I had let my DM know beforehand that I based my character's familiar off of a cat I had as a way to pay respect to her. Bad idea in retrospect. Anyway, my wizard had figured out that a high-level spell was used to kill a member of the staff, and we were sent to a nearby town to investigate. I'd like to state, now, I had told the DM beforehand not to do anything bad to the cat. I had stated, it's okay if she dies in combat, however, don't do anything that isn't needed, or do an in-depth description of it being killed. And the rogue was new, and it was her first time playing, she was in love with the cat. We made it to the town after fighting some wolves and something was off about the town. So we as a party agreed to send in my cat. Everything seemed normal about the town, however it was empty. I turned around a corner and he told me that my cat had something thrown over its head. I naturally took off to go see what was happening. Apparently in this empty town, there was someone who was doing the unspeakable to my cat. He described, in concerning high detail, my cat being violated. The game ended there. Our rogue cried and had a mental breakdown when she got home, and I told him off. Now, I understand how medicine can affect behavior. However, he used it as an excuse for his behavior. In a game after I DM'd for him, he tried to do the unthinkable to a young girl, and I told him off. We are no longer friends. I am scared to play any class or game with a familiar. It's one of the reasons I am a forever DM. Okay, I don't think much has to be said here about this. DMs? Don't do this. Onwards to story number two. Sometimes the horror takes place away from the table. This happened almost six years ago, but the offender resurfaced last night and reminded me. I had played a game with the same group for six years at that point, and the newest member wanted to start his own game, and several of us from the original group decided to play in both games. I arrived early to the new game, and it was just the new DM and me. He started making really weird comments and trying to touch me. It escalated to the point that he attempted to assault me and blocked my exit from the house. Fortunately, another member arrived. I was so thrown and confused, I stayed and played that night. I wasn't going to go back, but got guilted into it. I played in that group for probably a year, dealing with NPCs singling me out and often violence towards my player character. Eventually, he was creepy enough to the other people that the group fell apart. And when I told the original group, they booted him. But I seriously questioned my desire to play D&D. Okay, two things here. One, file an assault charge. That's something you could definitely do if it happens, and it certainly sounded like this was one of those cases. But number two, and more importantly, do not go back to the game. Do not let anyone guilt trip you. If something like this happens in one of your games, let the other players know and run. Don't partake in it, let alone going back to play one game more with these people, but playing for a year? No, don't do that. The first thing she should have done is go to the cops, assuming it was as bad as she said. And then number two should have been to tell the other DM at her main game about what had happened for that player and that she was uncomfortable playing with him in that game. And then to also tell the other people at the new game what had happened so that they would stop playing and stop guilt tripping her into playing. Yeah, short story, but this one kind of angered me. Let's, uh, let's hopefully go for something a bit more happier. P probably not, but story number three. Player turns genocidal. I was in a Star Wars campaign. It was a bit eh, since the GM was a bit railroady and didn't always explain things that well, so a lot of what happened felt like a butt pull. But I hit my limit after our new group went to Tatooine. 
There were four players, one cool guy, one guy whose character was basically a human version of Marvin from Hitchhiker's Guide, and a guy who'd missed several games and I didn't know very well. We were trying to put together the pieces of a map to some mysterious place or object. The first place was in Fort Tuscan on Tatooine, so that's where we went. We tried at first to infiltrate the fort, but when it went badly we ended up fighting the Tuscans. My character expressed doubt that they were doing the right thing, given we were breaking into their fort because of what was effectively a mystery scavenger hunt. And now people were dead. Oh no, said the guy who'd missed games. They're not people, they're just vermin. Just mindless animals. I was kind of weirded out both in character and real life. I tried to explain that we were the ones breaking into their base, but no, these were vermin subhuman, etc, etc. Note, there was no reason for the character to hold these opinions. It wasn't like they were even from Tatooine. None of us had ever been there before. The player just seemed to enjoy saying racist things under the cover of, It's just a game, bro. They're not real. I tried to point out that the stuff he was saying was pretty close to in real life racist imagery, but again, it's just a game. My character is a jerk and I'm just RPing them. Whatever. At least we had the nominal excuse that they were attacking us first. We finish up the fort, get the map, and leave. We have another combat with more Tuscans, and the player completely overrides any of our plans in favor of having his character do most of the killing. And at this point, I'm so grossed out, I'm kind of checking out of the game, so whatever. Finally, we get to our ship. And just as my character, the pilot, is getting the ship airborne, the GM informs us that a raiding party of Tuscans are approaching us. That's fine, we're about to fly away. They can't get to us in time. Q player, sounding delighted, I go to the gun turret. Me, no you don't, we're getting out of here. I'm going to mow them down. Dude, stop being such a jerk. He goes to the gun turret anyway, but thankfully I get a triumph on my piloting role and use it to say we GTFO before anyone gets to fire a shot. I am 100% done with this game at this point, and drop after that session. I genuinely don't know what was up with that guy. Maybe I was being sensitive, but it felt like he was deliberately trying to emulate genocidal language for the sake of being, I don't know, cool and edgy? And any attempt on my part of pointing out that it was bothering me was just met with Sorry you don't feel like that, slash, it's just a game, slash, my character's a jerk, slash, stop taking it so seriously. Isn't this literally how Anakin joined the dark side in the prequels, by killing a bunch of Tuscans and going insane? Maybe that's where he got the idea for this from, I don't know. Regardless, when you're playing a game, sometimes the players may want to go full murder hobo, but more often than not they probably don't want to do that. Your job as a player is to read the room and decide what makes sense. It's very clear that no one wanted them to do this, based on how the OP wrote the story. So his actions were going against what the other players wanted to do. And really, he should have been the one who left and found a different table after this, not the OP. Anyways, I'm not going to dive into it anymore, and that is it for the stories today. So as always, the source of the stories are in the description below. And if you like the story and you want to see more videos just like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell notification icon to be notified of my future videos. And while you wait for those future videos, here are a few related videos that you can watch from my channel in the meantime. Thank you.